We are on the banks of Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world. It covers an area roughly the size of Ireland. The lake is shared by Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. This is where the Nile begins its long journey, flowing northwards for nearly 6,700 kilometers, making it the longest river in the world. Ten African countries share the Nile River Basin all depending heavily on the river for domestic use, farming and transport. In recent years, droughts, floods, environmental degradation and water pollution have caused much concern. These now threaten the 160 million people who live in this river basin. About half of these people survive on less than one US dollar a day. Unless new approaches are found to better manage the Nile waters, existing socio-economic disparities can only get worse. Here in Nakasongola, north of Lake Victoria, Ugandan farmers rely on rainfall for growing food for themselves and their farm animals. Several national and international research institutes have come together to understand how this works and how people here can do more with less water. This work is being supported by the CGIAR Challenge Program on Water and Food. The primary goal of the project at this point is to try to understand how livestock are really interacting with water resources. And to be honest, we don't know much about it. This is why we're doing the research. In this part of the world, livestock is most people's greatest wealth. All research and advocacy have to be done within that reality. And what happens here in upstream Nile has serious repercussions for downstream countries and people. Uniquely for Uganda, there is a strip of land which we call the cattle corridor. There is always a lot of overgrazing, there is a lot of uh, grass burning, there is a lot of erosion, uh, a lot of overstocking. Animals, they, they treat the, the, the land and they break up the surface and that leads into soil erosion. All this has made the soil very hard. Very little water is absorbed and grass doesn't grow easily in such soil. Soil erosion is a serious problem, filling up rivers, lakes and reservoirs with sediment. Animal waste enters the surface and groundwater, worsening water quality. We would like to find how much water there is in the present water tanks at the full rain, rain season, and how long would it take for such a number of animals to consume that? It's early days in this research, but it has already shown that fencing of dams can improve the local water quality. However, water tanks and pipes have to be set up for the animals to access water. If we can advise the farmers and say, look, water is receding, you better start possibly looking at somewhere else. If not, we are to divide the farmers to dig even deeper tanks, which can carry larger volumes of water, which can carry farmers through the dry season. This land has been abused for years. It now needs careful regeneration using different techniques. The newly growing tree cover will help reduce water evaporation and soil runoff. In these areas, there are few or no restrictions on how people use the land. It's seen as a shared resource. But for the project plans to work, land users will need to change their habits. So here is a challenge that we thought would have been in Akasongora, to try and work with the community to persuade them to be more vigilant, to look after that cattle corridor, not to allow soil erosion, not to allow uh, grass burning, and not to allow uh, pollution of the uh, water. We are not trying to give prescriptions, but we we'll try to study with them how best this could be done. Mm -hmm.